Okay, so spud guns look pretty cool, but they've kind of been built loads of times before. Here's a few examples, mostly PVC pipe ones, a combustion chamber, single shot. Some of them are fueled from a gas canister, and some of them you have to unscrew the end to uh, spray some gas in. So they take quite a long time to refuel, and they're kind of just single shot deals. So we'd like to try and make something slightly different. We'd like to try and make a fully automatic egg machine gun. So some automatic spud guns already exist, which are pretty cool. This one's a golf ball cannon. They've got a hopper on the top um, that's feeding the golf balls in. And they've got a fan or a little shutter that blows air in to refresh the air in the chamber. It looks like they've got a little uh, handheld aerosol can here, which is providing the gas in through that hatch as well. Here we can see the refill mechanism. The golf ball goes in, this little hatch closes and clamps down. So the air and gas power makes the cycles per second pretty low but it does make the fueling pretty cheap. You can use pretty much any aerosol and you can just use normal air, you don't need any bottled oxygen. I quite like the hopper mechanism, maybe the sealing mechanism is a bit overcomplicated. So this is a proper Gatling gun. Um, the chambers pass in front of some contacts to ignite each one and each one has to be fueled individually through a hatch. And there's only six chambers so you can only get six shots until the whole thing needs to be sort of taken apart and reloaded. The Gatling gun design is really cool. Uh, I'd love to build something like that. It looks really complicated to actually be able to make it reload the projectiles and uh, reload with gas each time. So maybe that would be quite cool in the long run, but we need to have something a little bit simpler. So this is an air-powered revolver spud gun. Uh, this is using compressed air and a couple of little reservoir tanks. Once again, you need to take the chamber out though each time to reload it, which really isn't ideal, although this is pretty cool. You also need quite a beefy compressor to be able to keep up with this if you did find a way to make it work in continuous use, and I don't have a compressor at all. So I did really like the Gatling gun design. I was envisaging some kind of like revolving and reloading barrel mechanism, and maybe like a single combustion chamber that links up to each one and the barrel rotates in the middle, or maybe a, a sequence of combustion chambers that fire in order to give it time to uh, recharge with gas, but it's really complicated, and I think we're going to have a go at making a simple one first, and getting that right and automatic and then we could think about doing something a bit more crazy in the future. So we really want to improve the cycle time of the standard single shot potato cannon. So you need to load the projectile quickly which you should be able to accomplish through a reasonably simple hopper design. You need to charge it with gas quickly and you need to be able to replace the consumed air really quickly. So in the long run I think using gas with bottled oxygen would let you replace the gas a lot quicker and you'd be able to get a lot more bang out of it than just using gas air. So you could just use compressed air for a cannon like this, but you'd need a quite a serious compressor to be able to supply that gas for continuous use. Small compressed air bottles could work, but they'd be exhausted really quite quickly. Um, a leaf blower could work, but it would be kind of boring. Now liquid CO2 could work quite well actually, if you pull it off as a gas out of the cylinder, possibly into an intermediate chamber for the phase change. It's fairly available in the fire extinguisher refilling world, if you could actually find a fire extinguisher company that would be willing to recharge your bottle for your gun. But it's perhaps not that uncommon according to some paintballers that claim to do this. Most paintball CO2 guns use compressed CO2 rather than liquid, the ones that are recharged at normal paintball stations. But some of the paintball hobbyists use uh, liquid CO2 to be able to get the cylinder size down. So in conclusion, I want to go for a gas and oxygen or gas and air mixture, because I think it's just going to be the most fun. Small disposable canisters of oxygen are available online on like Amazon. These ones are a little bit expensive, but uh, several other types are available. As are disposable gas canisters for the likes of blowtorches and camping stoves. This leaves you with a gun where you can just buy off-the-shelf oxygen and gas canisters, clip them in and use it. You don't have to go and find some special shop that's going to do a funny job of filling your CO2 canister, and you don't have to go out and buy a compressor either. So here's a design for what I think the uh, cannon could look like. This is all designed out of a readily available PVC pipe that I found online and when we've settled on an actual build I'll post that list of parts down in the description. So this is the combustion chamber here, there's an end cap on the end with two gas solenoids mounted on it. Down at this end we've got a reducing bush that connects to the barrel. You can see we've got two gas cylinders here, one for the flammable gas and one for the oxygen and they're on little retention rings. Having a little peek inside you can see that um, reducer flange more clearly. And you can also see down here I've got two screws with some uh, washers to bring them a little bit close together that we're going to use as a spark gap for igniting it with a little uh, high voltage transformer. 
This is the spark generator module I've gone for. Really nice and cheap. Um, quite easy to burn out and quite easy to break the secondary winding on it, by the way. It's really fine gauge wire. So this is a 12 volt DC solenoid valve. You put 12 volts DC in here and there's a little magnetic coil in here and it opens and closes the valve. So there's quarter inch NPT, National Pipe Thread fittings on each side. Um, quarter inch is probably overkill, you can get this in eighth inch as well, it just depends on the availability of the other fittings. Um, there's a bit of a bottleneck, I don't know if you can see that little tiny hole in there. That's what the gas has got to go through anyway, so... Trying to open this up as much as possible is kind of pointless with this, uh, this solenoid. So this is a quarter inch NPT male, um, and a three sixteenth inch, which is about a five mil, uh, tail hose barb adapter. And this is a uh, bulkhead fitting. Well, it's, it's actually an adapter, but I'm going to be using it as a bulkhead fitting. So it's a quarter inch MPT one end, and it goes through to uh, AN3 thread, which I think is some strange pipe thread for aeroplanes. But anyway, for the other end, you need a nut that will match that. So the pipe wall can go in here, and you can screw the nut up there and use it as a bulkhead adapter. So we'll screw both of these nice and tight up onto this. So what we're going to do is grab some PTFE tape and just try to get a couple of turns around that thread. And we'll screw this into this. So we're putting the bulkhead connector on the side uh, opposite where the wires go so it can get nice and close up to the back of the cannon. So I'm going to do this up nice and tight so I'll grab a couple of spanners and do that up. Nice and tight, there we go. Right, so hopefully that won't leak too much. So this is what the prototype system looks like. We've got the uh, two solenoids mounted up here. Uh, this one is going to be for just testing it out for compressed air. So we've got a big five litre water tank. Just going to screw onto that. Uh, good tip here, if you use this flexible silicon piping, if you just drill two holes in a cap, poke them through and then put some slightly larger diameter pipe inside the silicon pipe and pull them tight. That makes a really nice gas tight seal for doing little tests like this. So that can go on there. And we'll just use a foot pump to pressurise that to about two or three bar, something like that. So we've got uh, the head of a gas blowtorch here. I've taken the uh, taken the end off and just wedged the pipe in there. We can screw a disposable gas canister into that when we're ready. That's the gas solenoid there. Both solenoids on a nice long bit of cable to test just with a 12 volt battery and for the igniter I've taken a uh, M3 bolt used a bit of the silicon pipe as a insulator between that and the can can of the uh, combustion chamber this is a, I think a toilet brush holder by the way and just the piezo element from a cigarette lighter just to test this out temporarily So I've just built this little control board. It's an Arduino Nano, two MOSFETs for controlling the solenoid outputs, and a relay for controlling the spark module. So we're going to have a quick go at measuring the pressure at the outlet of some of these uh, disposable gas canisters. So this is air duster, which is actually in fact probably difluoroethane. This doesn't actually say on it. Now the output pressure of these is usually determined by the vapour pressure of the contents, because the bulk of the contents are stored as a liquid, and the gas is uh, drawn off as a vapour from that. And the vapour will be produced from the gas until it reaches the vapour pressure, and then it will stop going from a 
uh, liquid into a gas until you draw some of that gas away and the pressure reduces and then it comes back up to its vapour pressure. And the vapour pressure is dependent on temperature, so we're also measuring that with a the thermocouple. So we've got a gauge reading in PSI here, we'll give it a try. So at 23 degrees C, we've got about 45 PSI. So same experiment again, this time with butane at uh, 21 or 22 degrees C. So that looks about 22 PSI. This is the butane at 30 degrees, and we're getting about 32 PSI. This is 30% propane, 70% butane at slightly colder, 18 degrees. And that one looks like a solid 30 PSI. That was a slightly different temperature because it's been now uh, sitting in the garage and it was cold out there. This is the 30% propane, 70% butane at about 30 degrees. Much higher, that looks like about 46 PSI. So this is a bit of a ghetto way of measuring the flow rate. I've got a inverted uh, Pyrex measuring jug filled with uh, water with a pipe going into it through the gas solenoid and that's fed from the adapter on the top of the butane canister. It's quite cold in here, it's 17 degrees. We'll have a go at... Uh... So what I'm going to do is point the camera at the measuring graduations on the Pyrex jug and I'll turn the gas supply on and switch it off when it gets to about a quarter of a litre and then uh, do some frame counting to measure the flow rate. Yay, buoyancy! It's still a scientific principle that works. Fancy that. If you are going to do these experiments yourself, it's not hugely risky, just be sensible, do it in an open, well-ventilated space, away from sources of ignition. And not with a boiler directly above you. So when we were checking the pressure of the butane cylinder at about 30 degrees, we were reading about 32 psi. And if you have a look at this chart from the engineering toolbox, at about 30 degrees, you should have about 2 bar. And 2 bar is about 29 psi, so we're not that far off. And for the 30% propane, 70% butane, we were say, seeing about 46 psi at 30 degrees. So at 30 degrees, that's about what? Four bars there. So a little bit over, about 4.4. It's about 63, so we were reading, well, quite a bit lower than that, really. Maybe the cheapest pressure gauge on eBay wasn't the uh, most accurate one. <laughs> I'm not really sure where that error has come from. So now that we know the flow rate of our gas, we can work out how much gas we actually need for our chamber. So to actually get a explosive mix, there's a lower explosive limit and an upper explosive limit. Now in air, for butane, this is about 1.6 to about 8.4%. And the ideal stoichiometric mix to get the sort of perfect uh, reaction with no waste would be about 2.7% by volume. So we can take these figures for our gas and the figures that we've uh, just measured and plunk them into a spreadsheet. So what I've done is I've used the diameter and the length of our uh, chamber to work out the volume of it. We've taken the measured uh, flow rate of the gas and I've just put in a dummy figure for the air at the moment. We haven't, uh, haven't measured that yet. That can kind of be as long as it needs to be for experimentation. And from that table we've got the uh, lower explosive limit, the upper explosive limit and the stoichiometric ratio. From that we then calculate the ideal amount of gas required as a volume from the percentage for the stoichiometric mix of the volume and I've done the same for air and I've done the same for the upper and lower uh, explosive limits as well. From that because we know the flow rate of the gas up here you can calculate the timing just by dividing the gas required by the flow rate. So we can see with that butane cylinder the ideal time is about 1.2 seconds and anything between just above 0.7 to about 3.75 seconds should still give you a mix that would go off. So you want to aim for that ideal value really. So I was trying to run some tests of this a while ago and I could not get the butane to ignite in the cylinder. And what I think might have been contributing to that is one, it was really cold so the flow rate was probably quite bad. And two, I was only switching it on for several hundred milliseconds, and you can see it needs to be more than 713, really. So that definitely needs amending before we try again.
So that really goes to show that it's worth working all of this out because I went through a couple of days of frustration not being able to get butane to catch fire. So I'm going to wrap this video up about here. Hopefully in the next video we'll start off with some demos of the prototype firing using these timings that we've calculated. And if all of that goes according to plan we're going to try it out with oxygen instead of air. And if all of that goes according to plan we'll order some PVC pipe and we'll make the actual cannon. So thanks for watching guys, please uh, leave a comment and uh, like the video if you liked it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next part of the video series. That was much bigger that one. Warm pot actually. Jeez. Nice. Right, should we turn the old primus off? Uh, yeah, right, hit the reek.